Sharing a DVD with your family, no more. Making your six-figure card go fast, back to subscription. Want to make videos? Monthly cost. Want to share a book? Just not possible. Want your video game to be fun? That's actually a separate purchase. Shit kind of sucks now. I'm tired of it and I'm going to prove to you how to solve this problem with three types of freedom, many of which I've implemented into my own life, and hopefully they can push us away from spending all-time highs and owning practically nothing to actually owning a few things in our lives again and making an impact on those around us. It's always been weird to me how comfortable people are uploading their sensitive data to just random providers that store it for you in the cloud and can access all of your data. Whether you're a student taking notes or you're somebody who needs to journal every day or you're a professional who wants to do scripts for videos like this one or you just need to be able to send PDFs or other documents for your company, Notesnook is a great option that actually protects your data via end-to-end -end encryption in an open source suite. Notesnook not only protects that data but they take it a step further because they actually try to give you the same features you're familiar with with other alternatives like Obsidian. Obsidian, Evernote, and whatnot. And so if you're somebody who's trying to migrate away from things like Evernote to more privacy-friendly alternatives that actually let you control and own your data, I highly recommend checking out Notesnook. They're a wonderful service, and they actually have a free plan, so you can go ahead and try it out before you pay for it. Check out Notesnook down in the description. We'll leave a link down there. There's also a link on the screen. And now back to the video. When you commit to a subscription, you're giving a company money regardless of future circumstances. And typically, your show selection gets worse, prices hike, software gets buggier, and you're still paying more at the end of the day. Subscriptions enable companies to be complacent, as I learned firsthand with Adobe before I left them. This step is simple and the most critical, and it's to reduce subscriptions in your life. Instead of being stuck with Netflix's awful selection every month where you mindlessly look for something to watch, you can individually choose to watch what you want to by renting a specific show or movie. You don't own it, but it's at least not a subscription. If you're a content creator, there are paid one-time alternatives to Adobe that can even be better, which have raving reviews by yours truly as well. These examples result in you getting a similar end product without needing a subscription, which gives you more ownership and reduces a company's ability to be complacent and ruin the experience over time. I already hear you typing about how this can be more expensive, but the reality is it's not always true. A good number of people are paying for things they don't even use or know they still have. So while subscriptions are enticing in the short term, they're easily exploited in the long run to take advantage of users and maybe even cost more. And for myself, I guarantee you I've saved hundreds of dollars a year by moving to one-time purchases, just Adobe alone. So avoiding subscriptions avoids predatory practices, but definitely not all of them. So if you did the last section, you're moving in a good direction, but let's cover some other issues. Rental costs, for example, can still be high and you don't even own the movie at the end of it, which freaking sucks. Some companies also work around calling themselves a subscription by doing this continual paid upgrades thing, which I feel like is just a glorified subscription. Um, so it's something I still experience with some software. Now, an easy way to avoid these is to be just a bit smarter with who you give your money to in the first place. Not too long ago, Blockbuster meant one person rented a film and multiple people could watch it, killed off by our good friend Netflix. Or if a person had a PlayStation 2, as long as they had a memory card in the game, they didn't even need the console. They just would go to their friend and play the same game. That's also being killed off. If you bought a book, you were able to lend it to a friend. And that's one of the things I really miss. And these concepts don't need to die. Your library has computers, video games, books, TV shows, and many even rent out laptops. And also your friends and family likely own things that can be shared. Sites like Alternative2.net make it easy to find great free alternatives to software you currently pay for. I kind of feel like an ad reel for the frugal subreddit right now, and I do love the sub, but this is just about financial freedom. You have a choice of who to give your money, so while avoiding subscriptions is great, there are still predatory practices that you can avoid by more carefully choosing who to give your money, and in doing so, you gain more financial and personal freedom. But there's this big elephant in the room where the free argument kind of falls apart. There are these infinite free services online that are sometimes even more predatory than their paid counterparts that are subscriptions. So what's going on here? Well, these services are typically in the context of for-profit companies who release free services with no clear business model. This is where things like Facebook and Google and many other predatory companies take advantage of free offerings, and it's why many have coined the term, if it's free, you're the product. Now, I do want to add nuance to this because it's not true in all contexts. So there are free services that are not 
predatory. And you might be asking, how are these free services different from these? Well, these are free software, as in freedom, not money. Free and open source software is one of the largest digital rights movements that forms the groundwork of the internet. Likely the server this video is playing from, much of the infrastructure and the operating systems you know and use are all based on open source software as well as browsers and a lot of other things. When something's open source, the software is available for everyone to view and contribute to or even fork to make it their own thing. It's a community service for the community. Some open source software can be paid, but that doesn't distract from these core goals, which include autonomy, collaboration, ability to share and copy, no lock-in, ability to reuse code, compete, and be secure and private. In other words, it's not a dick piece of software. Again, these for-profit companies don't care about these values. Open source services generally do. Even when companies do cool things like have lifetime plans, they can always revoke it and force you into a newer subscription ecosystem, like Adobe's done. This is not really possible with open source software as you can't just wipe away free and public code. For me, Alternative2.net was a great tool in finding these alternatives that were open source. So yes, if it's free, you're the product. Unless it's open source or a community driven project not dependent on maximizing profits. Now a lot of the concepts in this video seem contradictory. So let me summarize. Worst case scenario, this is a spectrum. You're with a company trapping you into their subscription ecosystem with the rising prices and a worsening user experience. Escape it at all costs. Just trust me on this one, it doesn't get better. Next best are services that allow you to purchase an individual product that you have a layer of ownership over. From there, you can always choose to not use the service or get it via different avenues like by sharing with people around you or other clever workarounds. And the far end is the best case scenario where you get to own your own thing that's designed for the community. Uh, that's generally something that's like open source software. So here's what I did that I recommend you all do too. Make a list of all services you consistently pay for. Subscriptions, software on your devices, and anything else. Start by seeing what you simply don't need. From there, see what can be migrated away from a subscription to something you have more control over. There's already two big shifts. Then you can see what can be shifted to either entirely free or ideally open source options that give you the utmost control where you can. If you're struggling with something, explore alternatives like sharing with someone you know, libraries, or one of the other workarounds we talked about. You can get really creative, and I unironically feel like our frugal is not a bad place to go. This can take some time to work through everything, so just make positive steps at your own pace, and over time you can make a massive difference. If you do even one switch after watching this video, then that's already a win. So you have to be the change you want to see. If you want companies to stop predatory practices, but you continually give them money, you're still enabling the problem. The most recent product I've been seeing is these like subscription beds, which I think is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard because there's nothing about it that requires an ongoing subscription and people still buy them. Don't do that. So vote with your wallet, it really matters. And if you're a superstar, you may even contribute to an open source project of your own and see your own vision come to light. It can even be something as basic as translating a website. Use your skills for good. Now, one way you can all contribute to this is to share this video around with the people you know. I have a deep personal opposition against these predatory subscription services because I've been there and done that and they really piss me off and I do everything I actively can to avoid them from here on out trying to stay calm. Um, and it can be really empowering. So this isn't a negative thing. You can feel really empowered. You can feel really good when you move away from these providers. So go on a journey and see what it's like. You won't regret it. We actually just made a video covering uh, Adobe and some of their history. Uh, like they actually paywalled security updates and some other crappy stuff that I'll leave right here. So go check out that video to learn what some of these practices look like. Thank you to our sponsor, Notesnook, and we'll see you next time on TechLore. Thank you for watching and go make a difference out there.